What's up, everybody? Welcome into the first episode of the Ennis Cantor Show on the NBC Sports Boston Podcast Network. Podcast, what, it's 2019. How do you not have a podcast yet? I know, right? That, that's what everybody uh, telling me. I either <laughs> need to get a reality show <laughs> or podcast. So, hey, start with the podcast now. Have you ever thought about that, having a camera follow you around everywhere? Uh, I think it would be too annoying. You know, just like just watching the camera just behind you, whatever you do, you go into a date that, uh, you know, the, the camera follows you. It just is too much drama for me. But I think, you know what? Hey, maybe. Never know. I never thought I'm, I'm going to have a podcast one day. I, can I have my camera guy, Barry, follow you around for like a week and see, if, see how it goes? Yeah, I don't think he can keep up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Do you watch reality television? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. I, okay, I'll, I'll tell you this. Not a reality show, but so when I first actually came to America, so I, I tried to learn the uh, language, right? So I'm like, I want to learn like the, the street language, mm -hmm. you know? So I asked one of my uh, friends, like, where can I learn the, like the street language? He said, oh, there's a show called Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually. So just start watching. I'm like, okay, I had no idea what Jersey Shore was. I'm like, okay. So I'm, I'm in college in my, in, my, in my dorm, in my room. So I'm just, I started watching this uh, episode. So the f first episode, I'm like, what is this? I'm like, this is like the most terrible show I have ever seen. But I'm, you can get like addicted, you know? And then the next thing you know, I'm going to a tanning bed. <laughs> now, I'm like really, really cool friends with uh, Mike Distration. Really? Really cool friend with him, yeah. Didn't, didn't he go to jail for a little he bit? He did, but he's, he's out now. He's out. So he's, right. he, he's out. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean I'm, I'm texting him on Twitter and stuff. He's my Twitter friend. So are you all about GTL now? <laughs> Jim, Jim Tan Laundry? Um, not laundry. <laughs> I don't know how to do my laundry yet. Um, uh, DJ Polly D was at Celtics games last year. He's a Rhode Island guy. That's what I heard, huh? So you might you might be able to adapt him Ooh, up if we can get him out here. Yeah, that that'd be nice. I'm I'm a huge fan of him. That'd be amazing. So did you like when you're learning English? Are you using like all Jersey slang? And I mean, uh, I so I after I watch it, I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna learn the language from this, obviously. <laughs> but you know what? It's just fun. It just keeps me busy, and it just like show me. The what America is about. People said that it's not about, about that, but just like just hey, yeah. watch it and have fun. I'm like, okay, pretty, sure. pretty close, pretty close. So like. I'm like, man, I start following like Jay Wow, Snooki, and Pauly D. I'm like, man, this is terrible. Well, I didn't know where this conversation was going to go, but this, I think we're off to a rip roaring start. So <laughs> just to kind of set the table for everybody, uh, I'm going to be the sort of the uh, podcast uh, point guard. I'm just going to like run right. the pick and roll. I'm going to let you finish like all the that. dunks. Perfect. We're going to dip into Ennis's wide variety of celebrities in his cell phone okay. and try and, and bring on some interesting guests. Who is the biggest celebrity in your phone book? Hmm. <laughs> I have a lot of them. Uh, well, you on politicians? Like, what, you don't you worry, you're going to actually like butt dial somebody? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you on politicians? You want a like, really, really celebrity? But uh, I'll say Terry Crews is up there. Ben Stiller is up there. Mm -hmm. Terry Crews, Ben Stiller. Wow. Let's see. Well, Donnie Wal Mark Wahlberg. Oh, that's right. And Do Donnie Wahlberg. Oh, Donnie, you got to I mean, Donnie's like... Oh, he's a lot low. He's, he's a good dude, man. Did you see him I filming did. Taco in MSG? He did? Yeah, he was sitting there with no. his camera phone with his kid. I, yeah. I, I didn't see it. Yeah. I'm trying to see. I mean, I always have like politicians all on my phone, man. So do, do celebrities know you when you're out and about now? Like if, if, you, if, you're, just, if you're just out in public and you see a, a celebrity, they go, hey, I know you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like when we go to a party or when, when we go to like a get together or just when I go to like a visit something, I think they actually know me. And you know what? Like I remember uh, I was with uh, Donny Wahlberg and first time I was talking to Mark Wahlberg on a, on a FaceTime. And then so like we were, we, we, I, I talked to him on FaceTime. I'm like, hey, I'm a huge fan of you and stuff. He said, hey, keep doing what you're doing. I'm like, I, 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 I he, he was just amazed that I, I talk about some of the issues going on in Turkey and stuff. He was like, I was like, wow. You follow that? I was like, yep. I, w I was just shocked. My wife is, and her friends are big New Kids on the Block fans. So Donnie Wahlberg, that, you know. Oh, yeah. And so I might need you to help me out there. I got you. I got you. I'm, I'm going to selfishly he's, use this. He's one of the most, I'm like, he's, he's a big celebrity, obviously, Donnie. But, like, he's one of the most down-to-earth guy. Really? Very, very humble. And uh, he actually said, so I was, I was in New York uh, last uh, summer. He told me, like, hey, if you want to be on a blue blouse I just let's go I'm like sure let's put me on a tv show perfect 
<laughs> See, that's that, that's the stuff that I marvel at. Like yeah. you, you just live. A, it, 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 it's neat being you, right? Right, right. Oh yeah, for sure. It's, it's good, man. <laughs> it's good. Well, for episode one, I do want to sort of get into your acclimation to Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, Tell me about, let's take, take me back to the summer first and just deciding to come here. You know, what was it about Boston that drew you and has it lived up to your expectations? I mean, well, last year when I get released from the, the from the Knicks, you know, obviously I was like, you know what, I need to go out there and just play for a, for a championship team. So I'm like, I was always hearing this Boston Celtics, Boston Celtics. And then, you know, and uh, I ended up signing with Portland, Portland uh, Trailblazers. We had an amazing run, amazing run. We played the Western mm-hmm. Conference Finals after 19 years, obviously. It was a, it was amazing. And, um, you know, after that, when the, you know, the, the, the summer was, uh, the season was over, you know, when the free agency started, I was, like, looking at the, the different teams. Obviously, Portland was uh, one of them. And, you know, after the Celtics, one other one. And uh, it's like... Coming to the Cel- coming to the Celtics was always like a, a dream, you know, because like you see like you always watch just like, you know, uh, Bird against Magic. You see the, like the Celtics and Michael and all this, you know, Parrish, all, all the guys. It's just like like man, you know, I can be a part of this history, you know. And then I remember the free agents started when the clock hit. Uh, Danny called me, and and then uh, we talked a li- little bit. I'm, I was like super excited, and. Uh, I think I told you that story before. Second time he called, it was not him. It was Kemba. Kemba, right? And I'm like, why are you not calling me from your phone? <laughs> 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 I was like, because I haven't signed with the Celtics yet. So he didn't want to give me his number. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was messed up. But uh, <laughs> but and then, and then and then I signed with the Celtics. But it's, I mean, it was a big responsibility, man. It's like a, a, you got to carry that history mm-hmm. on your shoulder. What has it been like playing with Kemba? I know, you know, just in this early infancy. He's, I mean, obviously, like, he's all-star, one of the best point guard in the league. But, like, he is, what makes him so amazing is, like, he makes himself better and he makes everybody else better around him. I think that's what makes him really special. I mean, obviously, we know that he's going to score 25, 30 point a game. And But what he, I mean, his, I mean, we were in the same draft with him in 2011. And I see him grow year and year. I mean, he just, he gets better every year. And he makes himself better and he makes his teammates better. And not just his teammates, the organization, is his city better. Uh, so I think that's what really, uh, makes him really special. And um, a very good teammate on and off the court. What has it been like playing inside TD? Well, I get a TD Garden. Like, what's it just been like being inside TD Garden and the atmosphere for a game? So I remember, it's my ninth year, obviously. But every time I came and played against the Celtics at TD Garden, I hated it. I'm like, man, I hate this place. I don't want to come to this place. Because, like, <laughs> not the players, because of the, the, the fans. Right, of course. Because they always, so whatever, even they by, they down by 30, they still cheering for him. They clapping him. It's like, it shows that they are the sixth man. So when I, after I signed with the Celtics, I'm like, okay, it's good. Now, 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 now they got my back too. Yeah. But uh, it's it just fun to just see that atmosphere. They just going out there, play uh, in one of the most historical uh, arena in the world. It's it, it just so much fun, man. You know, you got to uh, embrace it every second of it. We hear people say like the banners are almost overwhelming, right? Like that you feel this pressure of having to play for this organization. Do you like? Is there a sense of responsibility when you're out there of, of maintaining the legacy of what they? Oh, yeah. For, for for sure. I mean, obviously, you got this uh, 17. Everybody uh, talking about one thing, getting the 18th one, you know? So, like, I mean, it's it's obviously it's, it's an amazing thing to be a part of this, but at the same time, you cannot have a bad night. <laughs> you know, you cannot have – you can be – I mean, you can have a bad night offensively. I mean, the, the shot's not going to go in uh, 100%, but, like, you cannot have a, uh off night on effort. They want you to give yourself 100% and focus on what you need to watch, focus on what you need to focus and just go out there and just uh, just be a warrior. Yeah. Sometimes you want to be like, hey, the, the Eastern Conference Finals is good. You know, like it's not bad if you don't make the NBA no, Finals or win a they, title, they, but. They want that title. Yeah. They want that ring. So like, what's the Eastern Conference Finals is cool and everything, but like they want that title. That, that that's, that's amazing because I'm like, some of the teams that like you see in NBA, they make the playoffs. They're like, they act like they won a championship. This team, this organization, you made this in conference finals, like, okay, our job is not done. We're going to finals, and we're, we're going to win a ring. What's it like playing for Brad Stevens? I mean, he's – I mean, I – so, like, I watched him when he was in Butler with Gordon, obviously, when, when they went to the finals. And I, I was like, man, he's he, – he, something about him is different. He is, like – he is the piece of, like, a player's coach. And after I started playing with him, I realized, I mean – 
he is a very humble guy and he actually comes, he, he cares about the players. He asks about, like, he always comes and asks about my family, the situation, situation with the, the Turkey. And, uh, you know, I, I remember one time uh, my dad had a trial and then he came out to me and said, hey, if you don't want to practice, it's okay. And he told me, like, whenever you want an off day, just let me know and you're good. So I mean, as a player, that has to resonate, right? Like the oh, coach yeah, gets sure, it. For sure, for sure, for sure. It's it's so important because then you, the players want to go out there and, and, and die for for for, uh, for for that coach. And then he's the type of coach that tells you what you uh, what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And he keeps it hundred percent real. And it just he's he's this definitely special. What's the maddest you've seen Brad get? He what? The maddest you've seen Brad get? Like has he thrown things? Has he sworn? I mean, get angry? I actually don't get really seem too angry. Yeah. You know, everyone like, says he's like really even keel. First like, time, I, I, I keep trying to find dirt on him and like. No, I can't. no, no. He, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to think like I'm. I don't think like he always keeps it calm. He always keeps it cool. I never even see him like see 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 him get mad before. That's not. That's it not is fun. weird. It's very weird. But he, but the players respect him. You know, yeah, some of, of the coaches in the league like if you don't like show that. Show that, uh, show that face, show that anger, angry face. They'd be like, they'll be loose and chill. But here, he keeps it very d- disciplined. But again, and they just, I never get him. Uh, I never seen him mad before. So uh, uh, we've already told you we we're, we're, we're going to get Taco on the podcast at some point because people love Taco. But I, what I don't think people understand is how much you guys love Taco yeah. and everything that he's about. What has it been like watching him sort of <laughs> embrace all this? I mean, it's just uh, he's just not a fan favorite. He's a player for players a favorite too. But I think it's just so nice to be around that guy because I'm obviously he is uh, he's an he's an amazing basketball player. I, mean, I watched him in a uh, summer league. I'm like, this dude is gonna be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a rock star, not a superstar, a rock star. Because I mean, obviously, people he works hard. Right. You know, he's he loves playing basketball and everything. But what makes him a rock star is his personality, his character. Because I'm obviously he's one of the most uh, nicest and one of the most uh, kind players that you, you you will see. And the players want to be around him because he always brings positive energy. He always, you know, just he is that he is that glue guy, and uh, that's why I think that the fans loves him. So that's what that's what what's gonna make him a rock star. So I'm I'm, I'm very excited <laughs> about him, man. He's he's gonna be a, a special this league. Don't let him get better celebrities in his phone than you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be, he, that's just, that's just, it's too early for him. This is first in the league. Uh, the Taco Mobile is becoming a big hit yeah, on social media. Yes. You and so, Vincent are Vincent. So, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I see this dude, like seven, almost seven, seven dude, get trying to get in this truck. That truck is actually huge, but that taco <laughs> makes the truck look like a uh, like a little toy. But uh, he's actually a very good driver. Really? Oh, he's actually a very good driver. Yeah. He's actually a very good driver. Well, he seems to be a quick learner because his basketball skills are already improving. Oh, yeah. Like that when he was down at MSG, I said, Oh my yeah. god. He's already he's, sort of progressed. He's actually, a, he's actually a big trash talker too. Not many people knows that. He's actually, he doesn't cuss, but know. yeah, he, he, he actually a trash talker. He, get, <laughs> he gets to my face so many times. He's like, oh, yeah, hey, I'm going to dunk on you. I'm going to do this and do that. I'm like, Taco, <laughs> Taco get out of here. Taco trash talk? Oh, yeah. What I did love is there was a, you guys play one-on-one rotating kind of king of the court after practices a lot, especially during training camp. And there was one p- sequence where like, I think Jamie Young called Taco for a foul and he stormed off. He was so mad. Yeah. And you and Vincent were just sitting there laughing. Like, does he have? A, like, it feels like you know when things don't go his way, Taco can can get a little angry. No, I mean he, he no no he he keeps his good coolness. Okay. He keeps his no he keeps his calmness. But I mean obviously he's a competitor, so right. he wants to go out there and win. Obviously, but uh, you know we me and Vincent uh, pick on him a lot because obviously he's a rookie. <laughs> He's a rookie, but uh, he's, I mean, uh, he's learning, man. He's having fun. He's learning. Uh, no, nah, I mean, he's, he's getting better. I called him the Senegalese dirt. Yes. So I love how it got on. First time I played against him in, uh, in July, I mean, this guy only had the, the hook shot and, and the dunk, obviously. But now, like, me and him, like, playing one-on-one and every day and every day, now he got that little turnaround jumper, and it's, like, impossible to block a shot. Impossible. I don't think I ever see anybody block a shot in practice before. Really? Oh, yeah, I mean, how are you going to block that shot? It's- Has anyone dunked on him? Everyone tries, I hear, but, like, you know... It, Someone told me if you don't go quick. I he- did not dunk on him, but I kind of dunked next to him. Like, <laughs> I, I was next to him. I dunked the ball. Take the wind where you can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to get uh, that video. I do. I actually have the video. Uh, I actually have the proof, but I'm not going to post it out there. <laughs> I don't want to break your confidence, Taco. That is a good friend. <laughs> that is a good friend. All right. I do want to bring up one sensitive subject. Um, 
and you can stop me if you're going to get in trouble if you talk about this, but uh, you posted the Celtics jerseys. I didn't know this. Like, they worked on it for two years. Then I shouldn't have posted and stuff. <laughs> so, now, so I apologize from the Celtics and whoever worked on that jersey for two years. But uh, after I posted, I, was, I realized that, yeah. man, this is... Uh, this is not something that I should be posting. Well, I mean, the funny part was that but the lighting in the locker room or whatever. Yes. So obviously my phone is like not a bad phone. It's an iPhone 11, man. Come <laughs> on an, now. It's an iPhone 4. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's an iPhone 11. It's not a bad phone. But you know, just because of the lighting of the locker room, so the, I, so the fans didn't like the jersey, right? <laughs> it looked like a Charlotte Hornets jersey. No, no, yeah, it looked like, like, like a tur- turquoise. Like, it's like blue, yeah. right? Like a, a light blue. But... Actually, it's not a it's not a light blue. It's actually a very um, I don't want to tell you more about it. No, we can tell it's green and it's green and, and, and gold, right? Like, oh yeah, it's green and gold. And let me tell you something. Players loved it. Really? Players loved it. I loved it. Players loved nice. it. Nice. But uh, you're gonna get the you're gonna see like the real real jersey obviously when the time is right. But like from my phone because of the lighting, it looked blue. <laughs> so I understand the fans are saying like, oh, we hated the jersey. No, obviously we we should love the jersey because it's amazing. You know better than anyone that. Any press is good press. The Celtics should be happy there's a buzz about those uniforms. They, as much as they can deny it, they, you know, they didn't rush to, 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 to squash it. It's okay. That you, said, you said to us, you apologized to their PR staff the first day, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 as soon as like, I saw that, I'm like, man, I shouldn't have posted it, right? <laughs> I texted the PR person, like, hey, I'm sorry. You know, I, it, was, it was my mistake. I shouldn't have posted. But, you know, it just, it's all good. You know, the, you, you look at it this way, too. You lowered expectations. So now when they come out and they're actually cool. Oh, yeah, for people sure. People are going to be flocking people, to get these things. People think it's like a, it's like a you know, that the... the like the, they think it's like a North Carolina jersey. Right, right. You know, it's not. It's not Tar Heels jersey. It's actually like a really nice color of it. But just I've actually been a proponent that they should come up with some crazy thing. Maybe like, an, you know, work in a little color orange, like in the practice facility. Like the orange splash on the, at your practice facility is really nice. Yeah. I think you could put something on a jersey that would work. But, yeah, but it, also the Celtics are so rooted in tradition, yeah. it just gets hard. All right. We've, we're just getting started on the, the NS Cantor podcast. We're going to take a quick break. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about your wrestling history. Hello, everyone. It's Kyle Draper of NBC Sports Boston. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. You know, we are your headquarters for all your local podcasts. In addition to this one, we also have the Celtics Talk podcast. I'm joined by A. Sherrod Blakely and Chris Forsberg each and every week as we discuss the current state of the Boston Celtics. We expect it to be a great season, and of course, it's a great podcast that you must listen to each and every week. We have special guests throughout the season, plus we look ahead at the upcoming week for the Celtics. So make sure you check out the Celtics Talk podcast on all your favorite podcasting apps. All right, back here on the NS Cantor podcast, and sitting next to the former 24-7 champion. Yes. I mean that's that is the ultimate. So all right, I'm a wrestling nerd. If this, we're gonna we're gonna bond here over wrestling because, uh, and I'm a little bit older, so I grew up in the Hogan Savage era. Long time ago. And, and I so I, tell, take take me way back before I get I, I fast forward to the future. How did you get into prof, like professional wrestling? Were, were you, was that like what you flipped to after Jersey Shore or? No. <laughs> so I said actually so I couldn't play college basketball because I was not eligible. So I was like, you know what? I need to. I need to get a hobby. So I started uh, watching WWE when I, I was actually 18 years old in, in Kentucky. So then I, I fell in love with it. And I st- my favorite was Undertaker, obviously. In a, uh, in a big blue madness, I came out as an un- Undertaker. Unbelievable. It was amazing. Maybe my, maybe oh, yeah, my yeah. first introduction to you and I said, <laughs> This is crazy, right? So I did, I, you know, they came to Indiana one time. We I, I traveled to, and, and then uh, watched them a couple times and, and stuff. So... And then I remember uh, when I was with the Knicks, they came to MSG. And then I met, that's when I met Undertaker. I'm like, you know what? That, that could be a good uh, post-basketball uh, career. And because I'm obviously, it's like, it, it's all about me. You know, it's just about trash talking, get on people's face. You, talk, you trash on pe- people on the Twitter. And it's like, <laughs> it is, I love lifting. And uh, so I think it was fun. And then... Um, Step by step, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to do this when I'm done with my basketball career. What's it like meeting The Undertaker, though? Man, uh, so obviously he's actually a very nice guy. 
very nice guy. So you see, always see that mean I would, face. I would be shaken. Mean face. You always like that scary looking, but he's actually a very nice guy. And then I'm like, I want to see if that the eye thing is fake or not. <laughs> I actually have the video. Really? I actually have the video of MSG taking a selfie with an undertaker. I'm like, can you do the eye thing for me? And then he rolled his eye. I'm like, man, this is real. This is not fake. The most traumatizing moment of my childhood was he used to host a skit. Him and Paul Bearer, his, yeah. his manager, hosted the funeral parlor. And it was okay. like literally like there was smoke. And again, oh, yeah, I, like 12 yeah. year old Forsberg, maybe, maybe like eight year old Forsberg, I'll, I'll roll it back, make it, make it sound like I was younger, uh, is sitting there. He locked the ultimate warrior uh -huh. in a casket. And I have never, never been so scared in my life. Because I thought, I, I know that people, people can call it fake if they want, right, but right, like, right. It, it was real to me. And that moment scarred me. Like, I, I can remember vividly where I am. I remember waking my dad and being like, you don't oh. understand. So the Undertaker, I mean, he was, he, is, he's he's, he instilled a fear. Him and, and Jake Roberts had a snake. I mean, it, it, oh, yeah. you know, it was tough. Who, who else did you like as you got into wrestling? So, I mean, uh, I know Paul Heyman very well. I mean, he's actually my really, really close friends. So that's why, I mean, I, I like uh, Brock. Mm -hmm. But in WrestleMania, when Brock beat uh, Undertaker, I'm like, <laughs> I hate this dude. No, you cannot, be, you cannot beat this strike. Come on now. He was like 21 in a row yeah, or something. 19 cannot, or something like that, and now 19 and 1. That, that, that broke my heart big time. He put the 1 in. Yeah. 21 and 1 or whatever it was. Yeah, it was, uh, that was a traumatizing yeah. moment too. Even yeah. as I was like 35 years old at that point, I'm still yeah. crying about it. Uh Paul Heyman took a liking to you. Yeah. Do you so is this is this real? Like when you hang it up, like well, how many years are you gonna play basketball? I mean, I'm planning to play at least 14, 15 years. And then so at 36 years old or whatever, you're, you're 34, gonna... 35. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm planning to you know just get get in there when I'm 35, and then just at least like do it like five, six years till 40, 41. We have to come up with a better gimmick. And it's the menace is nice and all that, but I think you need like. Something you know, it, good or soft or good? You know, something nice or not nice? Uh, you tell me, I'll give it to you. If you want something soft, I'll like Turkish Delight. <laughs> Turkish Delight. You know what I mean? It's like, it's nice. It is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not a heel, it's a baby yeah, face. Yeah, you could, you, could, you know, I, I wonder what the gimmick would be. Ooh, you I come up no like idea. gigantic no Turkish taffy or, I don't know, like, I don't know, like what you could do with, with Turkish Delight. I, and what's, what's, the, what's if you're a heel? Oh, uh, Turkish tornado or something. Ooh, <laughs> you like that, right? That's not bad. I have no idea. I just like alliteration. Right. Like, you know, like, it it so. seems to work out. Have you met Vince? Vince McMahon? Oh, yeah, I did. So after that 24-7 the title, I went into the uh, gorilla, and then I, I shake his hand. I'm like, thank you for all giving, more that, giving me that opportunity to you know, to have this match. And he's like, you did a good, he's like, you did a good job. I'm like, thank you, sir. I met with the Triple H. He's like, I told him, I actually literally told his face, like, hey, I'm gonna be there in like uh, six or seven years. He said, keep my number on your phone. I'm like, cool. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's big time. So you could technically call Stephanie McMahon too, right? Oh, you, I, I, I met her too. She's super cool, so, super cool girl. We're gonna have well, next week's episode is going to be guess a celebrity you haven't right. met. Perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> We're gonna sit here for an hour trying to figure one out. Uh, what's it like being in that gorilla position? Like everyone here is like Vince is pretty intense and he is all about business. He's so strict. He's so like focused on his on, on his job. But uh, I don't think I ever seen him smile before outside of yeah outside of wrestling. I never seen him smile because he's like so focused on yeah. his business. I'm well, like, it's working. I mean, like, oh yeah, it is working. Done. It's obviously that was, that was one of the biggest. You are the pr prototypical Vince guy too. Like he always loved. Like not Andre the Giant size guy, like but like big guys yeah. that were could like you know really just throw people around. Right, right, right. So Fitz is still you know pushing buttons when you're yeah. when you retire. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm very. It's gonna be a, a fun five six years. What what do you what is the main thing you have to work on to be a good wrestler? Promos. Uh, I think I got. I think I think I got the problem. I got that. I think I got that personality. But I think it's just like that jumping, yeah, the falling, and just learn how to just. Take those bumps, right? Take those bumps. You worked I, with DDP, right? I did, actually, yes. He is. He is special. So we, so he was, like, trying to, like, when we were, like, uh, doing something like the promo, he wanted to just get that, um, get the get the personality out of me. Yeah. So, like, we were just in front of the camera, right? He slapped my chest back over his head. In real, <laughs> not fake, in real. <laughs> yeah. And then I looked at it. I'm like, man, I got five fingerprints on my chest. He's like... <laughs> I want you to be more real. I'm like, come on, dude. That's the story they always heard, though, that, like, Ric Flair would really chop you. You know, like, oh, yeah. you knew it was going to hurt, but, like, yeah. 
what better way to sell it? But yeah, you got to be ready to take definitely. some take some bumps out there. Yeah, and you need a cool finisher. I was, what, I'm still thinking about it. I'm still thinking about that one. What what was the movie you used? Like, cause it, was it? Uh, um, the I, I can't do diamond cutter really well. Ooh. Yeah, I know. I know. I know how to do and diamond the height. Cutter. Like did you do, uh, Razor Ramon when he used yeah. to do the the, the I whole told, so when Razor's I was, Edge. When I was wrestling against our truth, I told the producer, he was like, hey, "Can I do the tombstone?" He's like, "No, we yeah. don't want you to break nobody's head." So they, back. I, they pretty much outlawed it. Like I think yeah, like, even like, Undertaker can't nope. do it anymore, right? Like yeah. one person gets hurt. Marty Jannetty hurt someone with what's called yeah. the rocker dropper back so. in the day, and yeah, they they've had to take that one out of commission. I could I could talk wrestling all night. Yeah. I'm excited. Cool. Like I, I need you oh, yeah, to for sure. be, become a star. I got you. And then introduce me to everybody. <laughs> I got that you. all. But that's gonna do it for this yeah. first episode of the NS Cantor podcast. Sure. We're mm-hmm. off and rolling, baby. Let's do it, man. It's Every the f- week, first one. First one is in the books. We'll uh, we're gonna dip into that celebrity phone book moving forward, and we'll be back next week with more with NS. <laughs> <laughs>